Hello everyone. Welcome to our laboratory practical session at Springfield College of Healthcare Brampton. In this series today we are going to learn about the tonic weight application and blood sample collection. So let's start. First we talk about the tonic weight. Tonic weight could be reusable one or a disposable one. So here we look at the most commonly used one in the, our healthcare practices is disposable one. And it's always advisable to use the disposable tonic weight for the safety reason and the sanity reason. Okay, okay. now first we look at the site selection once we do Anticubital area is the most preferential site selection for us we discussed in the previous uh, discussion. So here we see in this, this is the anticubital area. Considering this is the cubital fossa, just below this level we were going to collect the blood. So before that we are going to select the area where we are going to apply our tonic weight. Tonic weight application is a very important component of the phlebotomy procedure. Roughly four to five fingers depending upon the size of finger or you can say three to four inches above the cubital fossa. Here we put our fingers and then we go over here for the tonic weight application. So tonic weight application, we can make like an X and from upside down, we can go for the application. Checking this way that there is no stretching, not too tight, not too loose. And remember, we are going to keep it not more than one, one and a half minutes. The moment we start collecting the blood, we need to remove the tonic weight this way. So from the smaller end, it's much easier to remove. So this was about the tonic weight application. Now we go with the collection process. We have to select the vein as we discussed in the previous section. Median cubital vein is the choice of the vein for us. So first preference, preference is given to the median cubital vein. Here we look at the arm, which is the simulation arm, where we are going to do the collection. So here, as we saw, for the tonic weight application, we are going to tie the tonic weight. And before starting the process, we assume we have taken the informed consent of the patient. We have prepared the patient. And after that, we are going to select the vein. The best vein is the one which is soft, spongy, resilient. And uh, when we feel it in a normal uh, terms, we say the juicy veins, which is the ideal vein for the collection. Not all the patients have a, that type of ideal veins, so that also we have to remember. Here we look at filling with the two fingers and finding the vein is a very essential part before we start the, our venic puncture. So this vein I'm going to collect the blood from. i just checking first. So this is, I feel, okay, and so now I'm going to tie my tonic weight. So around three to four fingers above, three to four inches away, we can go for. As we discussed before, make an X go like this and always see that it should not 
too tight, not too loose. And we can modify if we feel it is not very tight or very loose. Make one end small. After that, we are going to open our alcohol swab. So, so then we are going to prepare like this area I am selecting. So I go 30 second in the circular manner, 30 second preparation and 30 second drying. This is a very important part to remember. Never blow dry or in a wet condition also never attempt puncturing. Then by the time my area is getting dry, I am taking the most important component. I always check that before I start, I must have all my supply in a proper place. So depending upon the tubes which you are going to collect, so you can have a multiple, in a multiple draw, you may be having three, four, five tubes also or single drop if you are going for the single tube collection. Now by the time I have a one minute goal, 60 second. So I took my tube holder and my needle. So here we see this is 22 gauge needle. I prefer 22 gauge needle with safety feature and this is my tube holder now when we are going to use this needle always remember two things very easy to remember I always recommend hold the needle in the middle so needle in the middle is important. Why it is important? Because we have a needle both the side. The white side and the colored side. Both the sides we have a needle. So if we don't be careful we might break ourselves. So needle in the middle. Then next step is removing the white component so remember the white first just for showing purpose i'll show you this is a needle if you can check this one this is a needle which is covered with the rubber sheath and this helps us in a multiple ways the most important when we are going for the multiple collection it doesn't allow blood to drop through the tube holder so this is like the white first we remove now this is we are going to tie make it sure it is enough tight hold like this and then you are going to lift your safety feature so activate it and remove the colored component so here i am removing my black portion so here you can see the bevel side up if you turn it like this or like this or like this you will see your bevel side is going in another direction so bevel side need to be always up and our safety feature helps to achieve that goal so now we come back to our area because I was showing all these things I took little more time but Generally, we have to quickly accomplish all these steps. 
So now I have prepared this area. So I am not going to touch the same prepared area. I will touch the below that thing to make my vein prominent. Now when I am holding below this, what is my objective? My objective is to anchor the vein. To anchor the vein is to prevent the rolling away of the vein, which is a very common happening in the phlebotomy process. So this also gives me a control over my sight and my vein. So that is why I am going to do the anchoring of the vein just below the site where I am going to inject. No, uh, sorry, in, insert. So here when I am holding this vein, my vein becomes little prominent and then I am going to insert at a 30 degree angle. 30 degree angle. So this uh, when uh, I would like to again one remove uh, once removes to show you that how much deep I have gone because generally you don't get idea how much is too much deep or too less deep. So here you can see I have gone literally like this much depth. So you can imagine depend, uh, depending upon the depth of the in individual case you can go roughly this much length. Now again I am going. So holding the vein 30 degree angle you go like this and then you can easily change your hand take the non-dominant hand this way and take your tube in the dominant hand now when you are inserting this tube at that time make it sure that you have a eyes focused upon your needle not on your tube because tube is going to work if you are carefully inserting it is going to take its own time to collect so now here we go okay there would be a little click sound here as I insert it so this is going to collect it inside. Now this we have a water in this uh, simulation arm. So I'm going to show you how the water is collected here. So this is collected. Now once it is collected, if I'm going for one tube only, this is the time I'm going to open my tourniquet. And then I just wait patiently for some more time by the time it gets collected and I'm going to remove my tube. I can do my inversion number of times inversion depending upon the type of tube simultaneously or if it is a single tube I can have a liberty of waiting for 30 to 40 seconds. So in that scenario I may, I may uh, keep my tube maybe in a, my container, in a, a box or whatever, uh, I can keep it there and I can um, uh, first complete this part and can go for the inversion. Another thing if I'm going for the multiple draw, I'm going to take next tube and then same way I'm going to insert. Here you can listen a little trick sound so this is going to collect this way so in a multiple draw I may like to wait for tonic weight to remove not immediately I remove so maybe if you are going for three four tubes you can wait for like um, uh, depending upon the number of tubes you may wait until the beginning of the last tube or sometimes if the blood flow is good, you can remove after two, one or two or three tubes, depending upon the number of tubes. So this is like I have collected. I can see, you can see the collection is there. So now how to remove the needle, which is again a very important part. Before that, I would like to show you how to stabilize this component, this needle, because 
when you are putting your second tube for example this when you put it here you are going to move your hand likely uh, uh, moving your hand so better you keep it pressed on the hand so that this remain fixed and doesn't move this is very important part okay coming to the removal it need to be very quick fast and at once without any further movement so keep your cotton ball little bit away from the needle and you go like this immediately you flip back and you can see in this one you are going to throw it in a sharp container all together with your tube holder and needle coming back to this you can keep it on your uh, you have to hold this one so keep it there for 3 to 4 minutes and meanwhile you can use this time for inversion if you have not already inverted it so as i told you you have around 30 40 minutes up to 60 seconds not minutes 60 seconds you have a liberty you can invert never extend beyond that so you can do the inversion so this number of inversion you can do depending upon the tube and then you can put it in your collection okay, so this is done this way come back to the patient check it again now you can advise the patient to keep it hold for further 5 7 minutes so now the patient is holding meanwhile you can take your tube and put a label on that so you can uh, put your label when you put the label you can see the label can be put this way so here you can see how to put the label the label is carrying the patient's name dob id number you can write the doctor's name patient's name uh, your name depending upon the facility you can check with that and always keep some component exposed so that you come to know that what collection you have done whether it is serum plasma could be easily visible and even during centrifugation also this colored component exposed could be helpful so this was about the labeling so this is the way you are going to collect all your uh, collection then tell the patient about the post operative instructions that uh, to prevent the hematoma formation bruise formation mild pain or tenderness may be lasting for maybe couple days sometimes so explain the patient don't take any heavy stuff and uh, carry more weight and um, um you, you, you can ask the patient if they have any problem they can contact you so that's it thank you have a great day